the uh, case one. Okay. We have a uh, 26 week gestation male infant who is intubated and ventilated since delivery. And he is now six hours old and has received one dose of surfactant. The baby is breathing at a rate of 65 breaths per minute and his current SpO2 is 88%. And the ventilator settings are as follows. He is on uh, uh, SIPPV assist control mode with a FIO2 of 0.3 with a PIP of 80 and PEEP of 6. And the set rate is 40 breaths per minute with a TI of 0.35 seconds. And his ABG is all, like pH is 7.19, PCO, PSO2 is 62, and PO2 is 46, bicorb is 19, and base excess is minus 4.8. And the X-ray image is as shown. So can anyone read the X-ray? Dr. Iriska, do you want to try? Mm, okay. Um, I think sorry, we can you can see like there are some um opacities as uh, sir from around homogen homogeneous opacities all around the um chest x ray. Okay. What is your diagnosis or does it suggest? Um suggesting from the patient's history, probably RDS. Okay, so it's homogeneous. You have uh, almost like a ground glass. The volume of the lungs is important when you describe the X-ray for RDS. So, how would you describe this volume? Um, seeing the volume, um, I think the um lung expansion is um not um optimal. Yes, so it's a relatively low volume lung, grade two to yes. three RDS. Yes. And uh, what about the ET tube? The ET tube, it's um hanging. I think it's um you can uh, put it uh, lower to okay. the. So you can see can, the carina. I mean, you have yes. different ways of looking at it. Here, it's a bit high. Yes. It's acceptable. It's in the airway, but uh, safer to bring it like a little bit lower. Yes, sir. And uh, what about the blood gas? For the blood gas, I think um the patient has a um. Respiratory acidosis uh, and the CO2 is high. Uh, and I think maybe uh, this is taken from capillary. I think capillary, right? Um, so probably um, we're still not ventilating the baby, right? So I would... Uh, baby is on ventilator. I mean, obviously the settings are given above. Yes. Um, so I think... Maybe we can adjust the setting. I would uh, increase the PIP or the rate uh, for this. What acidosis is this? Um, respiratory acidosis. What is the metabolic component here? Is it compensated or what? No, I think no, not compensated. So one key thing is if uh, I mean, uh, if the CO two is increased, the bicarbonate should be. Uh, it should be to be compensated, so it both should be in the same direction for compensated. But here yes. it is low as well, so it's opposite. So what kind of acidosis is this? Oh, sorry, this is a mixed one. So it's a mixed acidosis. So just look at the direction of the change. Don't miss yes. the other component. And the mixed acidosis in this setting is not unusual. So this is a twenty-six weeker. What is the weight of the baby, Dr. Akshita? You have weight or no? I don't have such a... That's fine. We'll assume it's 800 gram or 900 grams. It's fine. So baby has multiple reasons for a metabolic acidosis. It could be hypothermia. It could be hypotension. And the poor oxygenation or ventilation itself could cause metabolic acidosis. So very important that we look at the metabolic acidosis in these cases as well. Uh, because of high degree of acidosis increases risk of IVH. And we should try to optimize the care from the beginning. Is it a volume guarantee mode? Uh, you didn't mention VG. No. Yes, sir. It is a volume guarantee mode. And what tidal volume uh, would so you tidal say for this? 4 ml per kg. In an uh, extreme premature baby, what tidal volume do you prefer to keep? 4 to 6. Yes. So 5 to 6 is better okay. for the small babies because you have the dead space to compensate. So relatively, uh, you have to have slightly, because these are very small babies and the relative uh, dead space is more. So you have to keep five to six for the babies below one kilo 
and four to five for the babies above one kilo. So closer to five ml at least you should keep for the small extreme premature babies. So assuming this baby is on volume guarantee, the PIP in this case, I mean, is it adequate PIP? Akshata, do you want to try answering? Yes. So the X-ray, do you think the PIP is adequate? PIP has to be increased there because the like we have the PSU to retention is there. And also okay. for the to wash out, we have to increase the PIP. Okay. So the PIP is already six, so you don't want to increase the PIP more. You already gave surfactant, but it's six hours since the dose. So obviously, yeah. whether you uh, increase the PIP and then review volume guarantee, make sure the adequate volume is set. This is assist mm -hmm. control mode. So, Dr. Talib, uh, what do you think about the rate? You, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> we have PCO2. It's a little bit uh, high. Uh, we know we can uh, have a PCO2 about 50, uh, 50 or 55. It's normal for preterm baby, permissive hypercapnia. But the 62, it's a little bit high. I will be increase the uh, uh, rate, uh, respiratory rate in this case. This baby is on assist control. So does increasing the rate matter? In what setting will it matter? You are clear uh, the concept of assist control? Uh -huh. So how many breaths are supported in assist control? Oh, I, don't, I don't know, 60 maybe, no? I don't know. So every breath that the baby takes is fully supported by the mechanical breaths. So that is assist control or SIPPV. Okay, so the rate doesn't matter as long as the baby spontaneous rate is reasonable. Increasing the rate on assist control doesn't make a difference unless you over go past the baby's own breathing rate. So here your rate of 40 may be adequate, but you have to make sure the eye time and other settings are appropriate. Uh, so Sorry, I, I don't feel that the baby has a 65. Okay. Okay, the so spontaneous it's... breathing rate uh, has to be looked at. If it is more than 40, increasing the rate doesn't change anything. So here you have to, the X-ray is relatively low volume. Again, remember we have discussed before that the X-ray is a point uh, reflection. So we don't know what time this X-ray was done compared to the current condition of the baby. Of course, uh, you go by the parameters of the blood gas and the oxygenation more than the X-ray if the X-ray was done in the beginning. Was the X-ray before the first dose of surfactant or after the first dose, Dr. Akshita, do you know? This is the after the first dose of surfactant. Okay. So uh, here it is symmetrical on both sides. Otherwise, uh, sometimes the ineffective surfactant delivery can be a factor. The baby is intubated, the tube is in position. So most likely the surfactant went to the right place. So it could be the severity. Um, the maternal uh, antenatal steroids makes a difference. So if the mother didn't get steroids and it's an extreme preterm, the likelihood of severe disease is more. We can go to the next slide, Jyoti. Next slide. Continue. Next. Next. We have already done all that. So uh, you suggested increasing the PIP to 20. The FAO2 increment will depend on the response to the PIP. So uh, since you are not on adequate pressures based on the CO2 and you can also decide based on the retractions, even in ventilation, mechanical ventilation, you may have retractions. You look at the tidal volume delivered. If you are not on volume guarantee as well, you can use a measured tidal volume to see whether it is appropriate or not. So oh. what factor is important when you decide uh, to look at the tidal volume, uh, Dr. Akshata? What other parameter will you look at to see if it's reliable or not? When you're looking at the measurements from the ventilator, what other parameter are you going to look at? Mm -hmm. So you look at the leak, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So if there is a significant leak around the ET tube, the measurement is not going to be accurate. Mm -hmm. So any questions on this case? Um, sir, you mentioned about the leak. So is there any like acceptable number of leak when we are integrating babies? Acceptable number of leak. Sorry, is I didn't there, hear you. Is there like an acceptable percentage of leak that um when leak, I mean, yeah. I mean leak yeah. below 40% is okay. But uh, oh. yeah, I mean the tidal volume that you see may not be hundred percent accurate. Most of the ventilators can compensate for the leak and the dragger is quite good. So they can compensate up to 50%. But if it is more than 40 to 50% leak, you would avoid volume guarantee mode. And you would look at the measured tidal volumes, keeping that in mind that you may have a reflection of a relatively lower volume because of the leak. And of course, you can offset that by increasing the pressure. When there is a leak, the pressure you deliver is actually lower than the pressure you set. It's similar to the leak around the 
CPAP, if you don't have a tight fit, you're measuring. And the same with the RAM cannula when we discussed that there is a resistance in the circuit. So you may have resistance or you may have a leak, which means the pressure is not delivered appropriately. So you have to compensate for that. So you don't need to worry even if you give 22 with a leak of 40%, it will mean the baby is getting around 20 pips. So you have to look at the overall picture of the baby and titrate accordingly. But uh, I wouldn't uh, change the tube electively unless it's definitely warranted. I mean, don't take intubations uh, lightly because it's a traumatic procedure for the baby. And sometimes we may end up in trouble if you're not able to intubate easily. OK. 